Okay, let's talk about the CLEP exam and specifically the CLEP uh, college algebra exam. So the CLEP program, as you uh, probably already know if you're watching this video, it's an outstanding program. It's been around for many years um, and essentially it's an opportunity for you to test out of a subject that you already know and, and, and uh, gain college credit without having to spend the time and money to actually take a course if you already know the material. So it's a fantastic program. Again, it's been around for a long time. You probably heard the term, hey, clip out of this, clip out of that. And if you can get credits, you know, without paying or spending the time, I mean, what a fantastic opportunity that is. So if you know something and you think you can pass a CLEP exam, you should be uh, trying to do so. I mean, um, it just doesn't make sense not to, right? Uh, especially with t today's cost of education. And of course, it will ex accelerate, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, the time you, um, or compress the time uh, required for you to finish your program. So, I mean, it, you know, I can go on and on about the benefits of the CLEP exam. But uh, anyways, so let's talk about the CLEP college algebra exam. What I have here is a, is a practice prom. We'll go through that here in a second. I will say this, um, uh, these exams are not, you know, easy. So you're not going to just get something for nothing. You're really going to have to put in the effort and, you know, show your uh, proficiency, your skill level at a pretty good, you know, your re comprehensive way in order for you to get college credits. It just wouldn't be fair for you, them to give you kind of a real basic exam and you know some few questions and then you pass it and then you get the same college credits as someone else who has to sit in the classroom and spend thousands of dollars, right? So you're gonna have to really know your stuff. So if you're um, you know unsure how to study with this or you're struggling with math or not confident about it, I actually offer a full comprehensive uh, CLEP college algebra. It's an excellent course. Um, uh, test prep course. If you're interested, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So you can check that out. Also, if you like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that will benefit you for the exam as well. But let's take a look at this practice problem. And basically, this is like a basic level problem. Okay, you certainly should know how to do this. So I'm going to uh, just tell you what the problem. Okay, you can see what it is right here. I want you to grab something. But I'll give you a little bit more uh, detail in terms of the directions here, and then we'll talk about it, okay? So I want you to graph 3x equals 2y minus 1, okay? Now, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. There's a couple different ways you can approach this problem, but in the end, you should be able to graph this, uh, this linear equation. So if you want to pause the video, give it a try. That's, that's excellent. Um, and I'll just kind of pause here, assuming that you've already done the work. Okay, let's get to the problem. All right, so if you don't know how to do this, if you think you know how to do it, then that's good, but that's not going to be good enough for the CLEP exam. You need to be like, yes, I know absolutely exactly what to do. So a couple different approaches here. When we're graphing linear equations in two variables, x and y, you can kind of do, well, there's three main, three general approaches. Okay, but really there's only going to be two practical approaches. The first is we want to rewrite this equation in y equals mx plus b form. So for example, if I told you to graph the line y equals 2x plus 1, that's a super easy problem. Now if you can't even graph this, then you really have some serious studying to do. Now, I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to put you down or nothing like that, but I'm trying to, you know, you should be gauging your readiness uh, for this. And if I show you, like, if you watch this video and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember all that. Okay, now I know. That's, you're, you're going to have a false sense of confidence. Just because I do it and you're like, oh, yeah, now I remember how to do that, that's not good enough. Okay, I'm telling you right now, you're going to waste your time and money going to these exams. You know, you're not going to do well. Okay, so that aside, you know, if uh, if you're not able to do this, then that's just a good indicator. Hey, you need a lot of uh, time to get to get ready for this exam. But you're smart. I know you're smart. I know you're capable. It's just a matter of time and effort and having the right uh, program to study from. Okay. Anyways, option one is we can rewrite this equation in terms of the y equals mx plus b. This is called the slope-intercept form. Excellent form. 
and we can then from here we can graph the equation. Now another thing we could do is just use a table of values. Okay, so we could just kind of do a next y table. We can put a bunch of t uh, values here. Yeah, we don't even need, need a bunch. We can put negative one, zero, one, two, figure out what y is, and then these uh, here are respective points on the x, y graph. Okay, so we could do this, um, or we can use the x, y intercepts, which is essentially kind of like an abbreviated table um, method, but we use this table here. We're going to figure out what y is when x is zero, and what x is when y is zero. So we have three options. Uh, you really need to know all three uh, anyways. Okay. So what I'm going to do, just in the interest of time here, I'm going to use, well, we will use this one. Okay. Now I just don't want to make this video too long and, and, and do this problem using the other methods. So we'll go ahead and rewrite this uh, equation in terms of uh, um, slope intercept form, and then we'll graph it. Okay. All right, let's do that. Let me erase this. Okay, and we'll erase this. Okay, so the goal here is to rewrite this equation such that there's a y, and we have an mx plus b. Now the m is going to be a number or coefficient in front of the x. This is our slope, and this b over here is our y-intercept. Okay, so we need to kind of obviously do some maneuvering here with our equation because I need to get the x term see over over here it's on this side of the equation it needs to be on this side of the equation so I'm gonna to have to move this whole thing over here and I'm gonna to have to get the y right here right I'm gonna to have to kind of shuffle some things around but that's okay that's what algebra is for and if you just do things step by step you'll be okay so let me go ahead and um, walk you through this nice and easy. First thing is I'm going to move the x term over by subtracting 3x from both sides. All right, so I get 0 equals 2y minus 3x minus 1. Now I'm going to move that y term, okay? I'm going to move that over to the other side, so I need to subtract it from both sides of the equation. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have negative 2y equals, now this goes away, and now I have negative 3x minus 1. So I just um, moved the x term on one side, the y term on the other side. So remember, I need to get it in this format. I need the y on the left-hand side, I need the x on the right-hand side. So now I'm getting there, right? I have the y on the left-hand side and the x on the right-hand side, so I'm good. But here's the thing, right? I need to get the y all by itself, one y. But right now I have this negative 2 in front of this y, so I need to clear that out, okay? Get that to be 1. So the way I do that is I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Okay. All right, when I do that, I get negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. So that's just y. Okay, when you, when you have a variable like y, there's actually a 1 in front of it. But we don't write, write the 1 in, in algebra like x or z. It's already assume that there's a 1 in front of it and it's positive. Okay, so now this is positive 1y. Okay, that's what I wanted right here. And now I have negative 3 divided by negative 2. What is that? A negative divided by negative is positive, right? So that's going to be 3 halves x. Now I have negative 1 divided by a negative 2. So be very careful about this, right? That's going to be what? A positive 1 half. Okay, so this is uh, where we're at right now. So I have this um, equation, all right? Basically, this equation is the same as this equation, all right? I just rewrote it, okay? So <clears throat> now let's get to the actual graphing part. So let me just erase this, okay? You can always rewatch this video, and and um, obviously, I could do more practice problems. You can find some. I'm sure I have a lot of these type of problems on my uh, YouTube channel, but if you want to learn this stuff in a real formal, comprehensive way, then you really want to check out my course. But let's go ahead and go through this. Okay, so now here is my linear equation. All I did was to rewrite it it's into an equivalent form 
and here is the form okay so now let's kind of sketch out real quick a y and an x axis okay so here's how this works when we're given when we have a line okay a linear equation a line equation in y equals mx plus b form the way we uh, graph these lines is first we go to the y intercept which is this number here right well let me use this highlighter so this b you can see this is the b and use a different color the number in front of the x in this case it's three halves is the m right so this is the m which is our slope and this is the b which is our y intercept okay so here is our y intercept i'm just going to go ahead and <clears throat> uh, kind of estimate this because i don't have a perfect little grid here kind of drew this out but you'll see the point of this is this, this the whole idea behind the purpose of this video is to see if you you know are you know following along that you, know, you understand the gist of what i'm doing okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to graph the y intercept so it's um, this number here is where it crosses the y-axis, so it's one-half. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, etc. Positive one-half would be right about here on the y-axis. Okay, so this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. So this is our first point. I'm just kind of, um, you know, doing a rough graph. Uh, um, really, I'm more interested in the procedure that you're taking, okay? That you know how to do this. Okay, so that's what we did first. Um, we um, plotted our y-intercept. Now we have to use the slope to get to our second point. So let's take a look at the slope value real quick. So m, our m value is 3 over 2. This is our slope, all right? This is the slope of the line. It's kind of it's it's a it's a number. It's a value that describes the slopeness of the line. All right. This is all should be review for you. Um, you know, hopefully this isn't new. Okay. Now, if you recall, the slope is the rise over the run. So basically, this line is going to go up for every three. This line goes up. Let's start here. Okay, let's have this line go up three. One, two, three. For every three, one, two, three, this line goes up. It goes out two to the right. That's the run. So the rise is how much it goes up or down. And the run is how much it goes to the right. It's always to the right. Okay. So knowing this ratio of rise over run, we can uh, get to our second point that's going to be on this line. So all we need to graph the line is two points. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the slope of three halves. So from this point, we start from the y-intercept, this one half, we're gonna go up three. So that would be one, let me use a different color here actually. One, right, because I'm, uh, now I'm at one and one half, right? So I don't wanna get too complicated here with fractions, but we're gonna go up one, two, three, and then from here, we're gonna make a right-hand turn, we're gonna go over two, one, two. So basically right there would be our second point. Okay, now we have two points that are on this line. And now I just draw the line through those two points. And this is the graph of our linear, of our linear equation, which is this or this. Okay, these two things here, this is the graph to that, um, to those, uh, well, to this one linear equation. They're, these two are equivalent. I just rewrote this in a form so I could graph it. Okay, so if you got that, then that's pretty that's pretty good, you know. Uh, that shows that you have you know uh, basic graphing skills. There's much more to this. Graphing is a huge part of algebra, but just a quick kind of pop quiz, right? Just, just to kind of see where you're at. Um, again, if you're if you're you know struggled a bit, don't panic. All right, uh, do something about it. Okay, because it, it's definitely worthwhile to pass this course. Right. So if you're interested in checking out my uh, CLEP College Algebra uh, exam, if you like my teaching style, that's the most important thing. Whatever you're doing, whether it's me or someone else, I strongly suggest that you learn from a teacher, a, a math teacher. That's my thing. I've been teaching many, many years. Connect with someone who knows how to teach math that you can, that you like and understand from. That's going to be the most effective way 
um, to learn math, you know, proficiently. Okay, you don't want to try to reinvent the wheel. Go to an expert, someone who does this for uh, a living. Now, luckily for you, you're living in a time where you know we have the internet and YouTube and videos and all kind of good stuff. But you know, think about it. Years ago, it was much more difficult. Learning from a book is okay if you already have strong skills. That's good for review, and I would certainly suggest getting a a test prep book. But you need to get the foundational a lot of these foundational concepts down. So anyways, that's one approach. Um, again, I offer many, many videos on my channel uh, that you may want to check out. Hey, if you like this video, definitely would appreciate it. Thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, I try to read as many comments as I can. I get lots of uh, feedback uh, on my uh, videos, which I'm definitely appreciative. It's the way I know, hey, how, how am I doing? How can I improve? and gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on um, uh, the CLEP exam. You know, put the effort in. It's definitely worthwhile. Think about it. It's not just CLEP college algebra. You know, if you know other topics, you know, you could save yourself. You possibly can even shave off one year off a four-year program. There are people that are able to CLEP out of quite a few things. It's not just you know, it's it, it's money you're saving for courses you don't have to take. It's less time you have to spend in school, and it's it and the faster you can get out of school and get into your career, the more money you're going to make quicker. So it's just a win-win-win situation. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time, and have a great day.